Oh, we got to I'm not even screen sharing. You <laughs> son of a gun. We're live. Wait, don't end broadcast. Oh no. Here Everyone. We go. <laughs> this is why this is why we need uh, a professional to run all this equipment. You know, here you go. Three, two, one. Okay. Oh, hello, everyone. <laughs> How you doing? So I could explain what just happened, but I won't because, you know, you don't need to know that. We just went live a little bit early, but that's fine because right now it's eight o'clock and that is the time for the 21 Gun Podcast, the official podcast of the Reverend Warriors to begin. We have a great show ahead of you. We got a lot of announcements, a lot of announcements. Um, just like, nope, Kevin, stay good. All right. We won't make that announcement. Uh yeah. Uh, tonight we have an exciting guest. We have Matt Davidson. He is a, oh, I guess he still is. We were just talking to him. He still yeah. is a skydiver, but, yeah. um, and I don't know, you know, when you, when you meet someone who does something that you've never spoke to him about and they're like, it's not skydiver. I'm a sky. I, I don't know. I'm a sky I, dancer. I'm a sky. I don't know if he'll correct us. Maybe he will. We'll see. Maybe he's a skydiver. I don't know. I don't know these things. I never jumped out of an airplane. Uh, he's a former gold knight, U S skydiving, U S skydiving team five times skydiving world championship he's also a cartoonist a dj a writer and a podcast host this guy does it all so he's gonna be fun to have on the show uh do me a favor can you keep your eye out for yonel sure can and i'm probably butchering his name just like we did to baby a couple weeks ago uh my apologies baby it looked like babby i thought that's what your name i'm just keeping an eye out oh okay good so uh yeah yonel is the coordinator for the las vegas hike that's coming up this saturday we'll talk about that in just a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, to my right is Jeremy, producer Jeremy. He's here to uh, keep the show going, even though, and, and you know what? I'm a little flustered because that whole beginning screw up, but that was absolutely my fault, 100%, because I was like, go live, go live, wait, don't go live. Oh don't, no, we're live. Don't talk, we're going live. <laughs> don't talk. Oh shit, we're live. And then we played that lovely intro. That was Eddie Vedder, uh, Patriot. Great song. I, I don't think... His idea of Patriot. Now, if you listen to the words to that song, uh, they're very, they're almost libertarian, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, th I don't know. If you listen to it, I, I don't think he's, hmm, how do I say this without getting political? It's a good song. Eddie Vedder nails it. How about that? Uh, when I was a kid, he was a great uh, singer. And that music uh, or that uh, footage was from Ronnie Gonzalez, who will be doing the um, uh, Reverend Warriors documentary that'll be coming up soon. So we'll, we'll, you know, we'll have him on the show because I'd like to talk oh, to yeah, him about that'd that. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good idea. We'll do that next. Uh, I freaked myself out. I think it was today. I think it was today. Did COVID again? No, no. That's just a daily thing. I don't care. Bourbon, this is a fact, gets rid of COVID. <laughs> oh, I didn't I didn't turn on. What is going on? Oh, I, I don't even man. have the, do you know what? I'll, I'll let you in a second talk and then I'll turn on the interview cam. Or, <sighs> or screw it. We don't have to do it, whatever. Um, but it's yeah, Friday, I one. freaked myself out because... Uh, uh, Josh, your brother, Joshua Walton liked something that I put up and I'm like, Joshua Walton, I click on his picture. I knew you had a twin brother, but when you know someone for a while and then you see someone that looks 98% like that person, I don't care how many times you've run into uh, a twin. It's freaking weird. It, I'm a twin and it's still weird. Is it really? It's still weird for you? It's, I mean, I, we obviously we've known each other 35 years, but you you get to the point to where you still look at each other and you're like, yeah, we're look exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Uh, one time when I was in college, uh, you went to college. Yeah, I did. Had to be an officer in the Air Force. I had to read left to right, top to bottom, What's three syllable words. Uh, we had this girl who was a twin. I won't mention her name, but it was her and her sister. Well, she was. It was just her, and we got to be good friends. And then she left, and her twin sister, I shit you not, took her place. I think this is how it happened. Um, so then her twin sister took her place in like in the same dorm. So she looked like our friend. She sounded like our friend. So she just became our friend. There was like, there was no, there's no getting to know her or anything. It was like, Oh yeah, you're in. And it was really cool. So I don't know. I don't know if your brother can do that. So we kind of actually had that, uh, 
<clears throat> I was getting promoted to corporal at the time. I just got married and we were at the barracks. Here, you tell that story. I'm and gonna... being at the barracks, my brother was visiting at the time. He had gotten out and uh, standing in formation and my gun, my staff sergeant at the time or gunny at the time, rather, rather was walking through the barracks, making sure everybody was out going in formation. So my brother is standing there on the catwalk and he sees my brother. He's got a beard on. What the fuck are you doing, Walden? Why the fuck do you have a fucking beard? Why the fuck do you have not have a uniform? He's going off on my brother. My brother's just standing there like, who the fuck are you? And why the fuck do I care? Literally, it's just, he stood there. And I hear, Walton! So I come running through the the first floor deck, through the uh, the causeway. And I see him standing there yelling at my brother. He looks down. I can't believe it. You didn't tell me there's two of you. Who the fuck do you think you are? It was the funniest thing in the fucking world. His face was as red as it could possibly get. And he's a black guy, which is even funnier. I don't know why uh, that camera's not working. It doesn't like you. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Lots of announcements. Uh, we're close to being able to say, and I'm looking forward to this one. Is is it even registering over there? Yeah, pull it up. Let's see if it works. Hey. Hey, there I am. Hey, good looking. Uh, <laughs> we're finally close to be able to say that 2020 is over, and I'm looking forward to that. We have plenty of reasons for that to be an achievement in and of itself. Uh, if this sounds familiar, Dan Mallard, I'm stealing your writing from the um, uh, the newsletter. Uh, Irreverent Warriors was able to accomplish so much more than survival. Despite numerous challenges over the course of the year, we still managed to bring thousands of veterans together from coast, from coast to coast. But that's not all. We boast a new website. I don't know if you guys notice that the new website is beautiful. I just realized I'm wearing a IW shirt. Um, yeah, the new, new the, the new website is great. Um, and of course, I started talking, so I started... Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, more leadership uh, partners. We have new partners like um, Grunt Style uh, and sponsors like Grunt Style and social media presence that has nearly doubled. So we're getting more reach, guys. And we're, we got 70 hikes coming up next year. 70 hikes. Think about that. So like when I joined the organization two years ago, I think it was like 40. It might have been less than that. It was less. Like, it was like 37. 37 hikes. And we're doubling it in one year. You guys should be proud of yourselves because the majority of you are taking the responsibility in telling other people about these events, getting the news out there. So good on you. I'm really excited about that. That's awesome. Um, I can't wait till the list comes out because it's just going to be super long. Massive. It's going to be so many options. Um, what else? All in all, 2020 has been a successful year and has shown unprecedented growth. I'm not a good news reader, if you haven't noticed. I can talk, but I can't read news. So I'll never be on... Uh, the network news channels, which is okay. I'm okay with that. Um, we are, we I see, I already fucked up. We are already preparing our national conference and have 70 plus events planned for 2020. We better see you next year. If you want more information, just like this, just like what I horribly read to you, head over to irreverentwarriors.com and sign up to get that goddamn, what's it called? Newsletter. Newsletter. <laughs> get the newsletter and then all that information will come. You'll be, you'll be sitting there on the toilet or wherever you read your phone, sorry, read my phone, and you'll be like, oh, look, Reverend Warriors, what's going on this week? Did, 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 did. It's all right there. So, and you know, on the newsletter, you tend to get some uh, spicy, juicy deals. Oh, yeah. That come up. Yeah, we'll talk so about that in just a second. Because, oh, yeah, that's what we're going to bring up later. Yeah, yeah, there's new, um, you can switch cameras now if you want. Oh. Camera one, camera two. Camera one, camera two. Okay. Camera one, camera two, camera uh, camera two. Our Christmas episode, I've mentioned this a few times, but I really want to make this uh, a good time. Uh, anyone who's local or if you're not local, Dan, again, we're bringing up your name again because you only live five hours away. Come on down. It's on December 15th. We're going to be broadcasting live from Revival 1869. Mike. Stojic, former Marine Corps officer, and Malia Christie, who is a big supporter of the military. They own the bar, Revival 1869, and um, uh, COVID has been just uh, shit on every small business out there. So uh, come down. They are going to be giving out uh, meals. Hold on a second. You know what? I copied and pasted. I did the same exact thing last year or last week. I had the, on your phone. his announcement on here, but watch, I'll just do this. And there it is. Um, free holiday meals for vets and anyone needing a good ass meal. This is from him. These are his words. A good ass meal. And a little love this holiday season. 2020 is bullshit. We want to make it a little bit better. Pick up at Revival 1869 between 5 and 8 p.m. I say stay and have a drink or two and talk with us and come on the show. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's 222 East Main Street, Clayton, North Carolina. They are smoking turkeys and ham. Each meal consists of a smoked turkey, smoked ham, potatoes, green beans, dinner roll, dessert. And once again, that is totally free. So that is going to be a really good time. Really looking forward to uh, that. I hope we make it work with the whole remote thing, but should do all right. I think we'll be okay. And 
Two days later, on December 17th, we're going to the DOD tasked us. They called me. President uh, Trump called me and said, I've got a big, uh, big lead. No, this is horrible comedy. Um, but yeah, they wanted me to be the actual person that goes out there and finds out once and for all this. It'll be settled on December 17th, which is the smartest branch of the military. Uh, we I all know that. kind of what it is. You know, I don't want to Marines. I don't want to say anything. Is that crashing and burning? Oh, no, sorry. it's doing a wonderful job <laughs> dropping supplies, bullets and beans and toilet paper to the troops. Um, so yeah, one thing though, it's that's going to be on December 17th. It's going to start at 8 PM tune in right here. It's going to be good. We'll, we'll have a prize for the, the winner. Hopefully he's local. So I can send him some booze or something. Otherwise maybe we'll get a t-shirt. I don't know. Um, uh, I was just going to say something about that, but I, uh, said, so, oh yeah, we need a coastie. So if you are a puddle jumper, puddle police, what do they call them? Puddle pirate. Uh, almost Navy. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm ki I'm kidding. Uh, I saw a meme that said, I think we brought up on the show that said, um, air force is the coast guard of the space force. Oh, God. <laughs> they're not wrong. They're not wrong. It's true. Um, so yeah, if you are a coastie or, you know, a coastie and they want to come on the show to prove, to prove once and for all that they are the smartest. Have them send me an email, Kevin at 21gun.net. Spell it out, 21gun.net. Um, Dan, you're coming up three times. I actually have you in my notes right here. Dan Dropping Mallard up names. in the D.C. area. Uh, he's going to ruck on Sunday morning. So if you're up in the Baltimore, D.C. area, uh, he's extended an open invite. He's going to start at the Marine Corps Memorial parking lot, maybe play tourist a little bit. Uh, you'll need masks because DC is 100% masks. Uh, he is stepping off at nine zero nine hundred rally and step off. So if you guys are in the area and you just feel like going out for a little uh, ruck on Sunday, hang out with Dan. Uh, we have two hikes left this year. Is is Yonel on yet? He is not. Damn it, Yonel. You're losing your time here. It's 811. I'll give Fire. him a few minutes. I'll Fire. give him a few minutes. Um, I wish. Yeah, whatever. We can go through some stuff. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll do that in a second, and then I will... Actually, do you, want, you say all the details about um, December 5th and December 12th, and I will text Yano and see if you can get him on. All here. right, so December 5th, which, as you guys know, is this Saturday, we have the Las Vegas hike. No, it's not canceled. If you need information, please look for the local page, Irreverent Warriors Las Vegas, or message the main Irreverent Warriors page or any of your local pa um, pages, and we can give you that information. December 12th coming up is the Key West hike. Last hike of the year, big blowout every Friday or the Friday before is Silkies and Sequins. You have, it's your, it's the last Chris, Christmas Eve festival. Uh, they're time. out of tickets though. Tickets have been sold out. Well, that's what I was saying is, oh, that's what I was getting to. I don't listen to it. I'm just. Is that if you people. haven't gotten your tickets, they are now sold out. So. Don't buy them from somebody <laughs> else because we don't we don't do that because we have people scalping that shit all the time. But if you'd like to go and someone can't go, keep an eye on the pages because people sometimes back out. People can't make it. Sometimes they will give you a ticket. You never know. Um, so that's the last hike. Just keep up. Keep in mind as we as we do have the leadership conference coming up, we will have new dates for all upcoming hikes um, coming up next year. Oh wait, do we have Yano? No, we do not. God damn it, Yano! Come on, buddy. He's going to plug the uh, Las Vegas. That's the first time they're doing Las uh, Vegas this year. They're actually, um, my buddy Zach Baker from uh, 60 Days In, he works for a company there called Battlefield Las Vegas. It sounds oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. Are we going to shoot this? guns and stuff? Yeah. 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 It's like all former Marines or military and all that. And that's where they're going to start. Um, but yeah, I won't talk too much about that until we get him on here what else we talked about the monthly newsletter go sign up get all your new information oh let's bring up our new silkies <gasps> silky smooth guys let's check these out it. no where's that's the uh, here's my pants nope that's not it i'm on the wrong screen boom silky oh that's the these are the classic ones though don't we oh there, there they are look at that blow that up pull that up jamie Oh, there it is. So if you guys need some silky, it's Christmas time. It's Christmas time. So what you need to do is two things. One, donate, because that's the time of year it is. Except for, I don't know if you saw my joke on uh, Instagram. Except for crabs, they don't donate because they're shellfish. I, you're fired. You're so fired. Because they're shellfish. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it is the season. So go on there, buy yourself up. You know what? 
buy yourself a pair of silkies. Walk around. I wear my silkies all the time. I cut the liner out. My kids are like, what the hell are you doing, dad? I don't care because I earned the right to wear silkies. Uh, and so did you. So go pick up a pair or get yourself some other swag. There's a lot of stuff on there. We're all friends. Buy something. Buy a tumbler for your friend. Um, if you don't want to buy that, say you have too much IW swag. There's no such thing. Just so you think that. You can head over to Grunt Style and buy the Irreverent Warriors Grunt Style shirt, which is pretty cool. I, are you bringing all this up? Because I don't have my monitor up. Um, yes, you are. Good for you, Jeremy. Not all heroes wear pants. Yeah, just that's saying. a good shirt. I saw that uh, just recently. Oh, it was last week when you were on the show. That's right. I was wearing it. And it's quite nice. It's very comfortable, very soft. And I was wearing my Zilkies. Nice. Uh, and 21 Gun merch. If you want to buy it, it looks like I'm going to be giving out a lot of that stuff. <laughs> But um, yeah, you can head over to reverentwarriors.com and um, not, I'm sorry, uh, 21gun.net and we will have that for you. Um, I don't think we're going to get Jan L on. That's too bad because I had a lot of things I want to talk to him about. I mean, well, is, he, is, he, is he, he a Marine? First, I got a question. Is he a Marine? He's like five different branches. I swear to God. He's so then you have branches. like the ultimate reason to be early. Yeah, that's right. No, he was saying he was having some de tech difficulties. So, oh, well, that that's that's happened yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, so, I mean, I kind of get that. Happens to us all the time. So, um, yeah, just keep your eye out. If he hops on, then we'll we'll pull him up there. Let's get on to news around the AOR. Uh, a few episodes ago, I talked about the high unemployment rate for post 9/11 vets. Um, here is another excuse not to be unemployed. Um, so I'll read exactly from McKesson is hiring trips. I'll, I'll read from their website. What's next? It's a question that more than 200,000 military service members often ask themselves each year as they face their transition back to civilian life. And McKesson stands, and there's no relationship between us and McKesson. Um, I'm in medicine. I see them all the time. They're a great company. Um, just so you know, this isn't a paid advertisement. This is just to help you guys out if you're looking for work right now. Uh, McKesson, me McKesson, members of the armed for Jesus Christ, members of the armed forces abide by a common set of core values, integrity, respect, and excellence, duty, service beyond self. Not so coincidentally, it's those same values that guide McKesson uh, and their employees. That shared calling to serve a higher purpose is one of the many reasons military veterans play such a vital role at McKesson. We offer employees, blah, 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 blah. So if you're looking for work, head over. I think this is really cool because um, they actually hire through a, another organization called HirePurpose.com, H-I-R-E, Purpose.com. And they focus on hiring veterans and all that. So, um, you know, people, here's the thing. Uh, and I get it. I, I get where people are getting at. Um, they don't like the idea of not kicking down doors anymore. Right. They don't like I didn't like the idea. I still don't like the idea that, you know, I'm, I, I can't go to Afghanistan. I can't go somewhere cool and do some some cool job. Uh, you know, our future may not be fast roping down attack helicopter. Well, they don't fast rope down attack helicopters, but uh, a, a, a FBI helicopter and, and saving people from terrorists. That might not be our future anymore. I'm kind of sick of hearing people bitch that the career that they want isn't available. Uh, I hear it a lot. I talk to a lot of people and they're like, well, you know, I found a job here, but they don't pay well. It's entry level. Or, um, you know, I used to be, a, I hear it a lot. Um, sergeant of troops. I'll say sergeant of troops. Yep. There's a lot of people out there and, and now they want me to start as an intern as I'm going to, okay, we're going to go old guy here for a second. There comes a time in your life every now and then where you have to eat shit. You did it in boot camp. You did it as a boot. You did it as um, a student in the schoolhouse. You have to eat shit every now and then. I remember specifically, I was 33 years old and I was stocking a, um, uh, what do you call it? A, a supply cabinet full of medical supplies. I was a medical assistant. Thank, thank, thank God you said like, I was supplies, stocking the person. neighbor's <laughs> wife and she got it. No, no, no. So I'm stocking this Ooh, thing. We have you on now. And I, oh, sweet. Uh, hold that thought. Boy, this is a clusterfuck of a show. Let's bring on Yano. Yano, what's Guys, going on? What's, happening? what's going oh, on, fellas? Blowing out our eardrums. What's up, man? Uh, what's going on? on? So tell us about Las Vegas. This is the first hike for you guys ever, and it's in, what, three days, two days? How's two it going? Days, two days. Saturday, December 5th, 0800, Battlefield Vegas. We're hiking the strip to the uh, Vegas sign and back, and it should be fun. Unfortunately, it's going to be a little no frills. Uh, you know, um, we've got a few restrictions here in Nevada. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so, uh, 
I was going to say that's the case going around everywhere. Hey, I got a quick question. Uh, I figured you were like a, a Las Vegas native, but you sound more like you're from the Bronx. <laughs> I was born and raised in New York. I've been in Vegas a while. I retired out of here and at, at a Nellis Air Force Base, and I've been here about 20 years on and off. But I was born and raised in New York, and I never lost the accent. Right. Now, here's the question. Service. Here's a question branch. for you. Do you consider yourself a Marine, an airman, a soldier? Because you've been in how many different branches? Four branches of the military. I've had a highly interesting and highly undistinguished military career. <laughs> well, I, you- I made mediocre look good. Yeah. Well, you flew helicopters, right? I did. I did. Okay. Did you do that from the get-go? Did you enter? Uh, uh, my intent what? My intent was to be a Marine officer and, and be a Marine aviator. Uh, when I when I got my commission and graduated the basic school and was excited about going to flight school, they called us into O'Bannon Hall, which any any Marine officers will know where that is. And they, I'm paraphrasing, said, it sucks to be you guys. We got too many pilots and uh, nobody's going to flight school for two years at least. Yeah. And so they gave us a bunch of options. Those of us who kept our air contract uh, would do other MOSs for the time being. And then if you dropped your air contract, they gave you any MOS you wanted on the spot. I chose the latter and had orders to the seventh truck battalion camp Pendleton, California. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but one of the lieutenants in my class, his dad was a Navy Admiral, a fighter pilot. Worked at Nav Air, and since it's all naval aviation, he walked over to his Marine counterpart and basically asked what the blank was going on. They told him, and he goes, shit, we're short pilots. Can we take some of these guys? And the Marine Corps and Navy worked out a drug deal, and a few weeks later, a couple of Navy 06s came in and said, hey, all you guys waiting to go to flight school, how'd you like to go sooner? And uh, a bunch of us said, yeah, about 150, 100 75 guys said, yeah, out of uh, three TBS classes. Wow. And um, did you know we did some BS jobs for about three, four months till the paperwork got done. And then one day, I got my DD-214 from the Marine Corps, sidestepped over, swore, swore in as an ensign, and was in flight school a week later. Do you, do you know what's something I bring up a lot? Um, people like, and it's kind of what I was just getting at a minute ago about employment and what you see your goal in life, right? Everyone kind of like, let's say you wanted to be uh, an air force pilot. I want to be an air force pilot. That's what I want to do. Here I am. I'm an air force pilot. People don't realize how much of that is luck. Like you could be the top candidate to be an air force pilot and just the billet doesn't land in your seat. So you don't get it. Uh, Listen, I'm the king of bad timing, but I, I mean, I, in the end, I'm very lucky. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, things worked out very well for me, thankfully. But, you know, I I, I love the Marine Corps and I drank the Kool-Aid and I was all about it. But I didn't want to, you know, your eyes could go bad. Anything could happen. So that chance to be a naval aviator when they flash it in front of your face, you're like, OK, I'll do it. And I'd done everything I was going to do as a Marine anyway. There wasn't anything else I need to do mar- needed to do Marine wise. I was a TBS graduate. So I'm basically a almost an infantry officer. I've done all that stuff. So there was nothing more for me to prove. So I did it and flew 53 E's in the Navy, which is what I wanted to fly in the Marine Corps anyway. And, um, the stallion. Yeah. Super stallion. Yep. Uh, that was my nickname in high school. Every time Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, That's a good nickname, man. (laughs) (laughs) Not really. It is luck though. No, you're right. A lot of it is luck, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, I, I've, I've been very fortunate and as odd as my career was, I don't know that I trade it. Yeah. You know, yeah, but yeah. The, only th- the only thing I regret is not going to combat as a Marine. It's kind of weird. I don't know why that is. I mean, I've seen plenty of combat, but just not, not being going to combat as a Marine is a little bit of a regret of mine. But beyond that, everything was yeah, pretty, that's understandable. Pretty I'm going to have a special episode about folks who feel that way. Um, there's a lot of folks out there that just never got to go to combat what, whatsoever, not got, never got deployed just by, you know, luck. I mean, just by, I mean, there's no reason for it. It just happened to be that way. And a lot of those guys carry a lot of guilt with them, which is, um, it's understandable. I get it. Uh, but yeah, I want to have a special show about that because we should get you on because that's, it's an interesting thing. Cause I mean, that's what we sign up for, right? We sign up to go, fight wars and when you don't do it you kind of feel like you were left in the magazine right you feel like it's, sent around. It, it's a very odd thing and i've tried to be an amateur psychologist about it and i've talked it over it's easy to talk over with your fellow military guys i've tried to talk it over with a lot of my civilian friends it's it's very weird 
the uh, you it's what you signed up to do. It's where the rubber meets the road in that profession, the profession of arms. Right. But you just you miss miss it, you know, and 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 you in a weird way, some people, I don't know, I kind of like it. And it took me a long time to be able to say that without feeling some guilt or some some bad feelings about myself for liking it. But it was, I think, yeah. I think people are meant to do certain things in life. I think there's some, maybe a little bit of a bigger plan out there than what we have. And I think it, you know, now that I'm older, almost I'm 59, I'm an old fart. I, Holy I, moly. I think it was what I was meant to do. You know, it's what I always wanted to do. I don't recall ever wanting to do anything else than be in the military and be a Marine, yeah. you know? So it's just so, one of those so things. When did you uh, get involved with irreverent warriors? I mean, you went from not being involved at all to running a hike in one of the craziest cities in the country. So how did that process? Okay, so I've been kind of following it for a while. I'm involved with another veterans group called merging vets and players, MVP been involved with them right. for about four and a half years. Um, and that's with I, that's that's with what's his name, right? Uh, J, Nate Boyer and Jay Glazer. Yeah, I was just right. texting him like two months ago. He was going to come on the show, and I totally forgot about it. So he just said that. Yeah, really, really cool organization. Right, and it's been great. So, but I I kind of started following the Reverend Warriors, and just I thought the Silky Side thing was a cool idea, and yeah. I kind of been following from afar, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to go to one of their New York hikes because it'll be an excuse to go home to New York, and for me being a, you know, even though I haven't lived there in a while, New York is still always home to me. So I was like, and then the timing worked out and I went to the one in New York, uh, uh, not the most recent one, but the, the year previously. Right. And um, it was a really interesting event for me because I didn't know anyone. Within five minutes, you're laughing and bullshitting with the guys like they're in your unit forever. Yep. Uh, and it, it, what I realized, and I've been hit by veteran suicide uh, pretty significantly. Our, my, the combat rescue community in the air force, you know, the air force gets goofed on a lot. A lot of it is well-deserved, but there is a fighting part of the air force. Right. Oh, yeah. And I was fortunate enough to be in that. And my community, you know, if you've been a Marine in Hellman and you, you probably know the call sign Pedro, that was us, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah. and, uh, so we took it on the chin suicide wise. I've lost a lot of good friends up in, as recently as six months ago to this. So it was just something I was really passionate about. And the, the, the hike in New York, I'm sorry if I'm rambling, that to me, I realized somebody there was in their house the day before with a bottle of Jack and the Glock on the table, considering eating the Glock. They said, let me go to this hike and see what it's all about. And now they're like, oh, wait, there's other people who think like me, who have the same experience as me. I've got a support system now. Maybe I don't need to think about doing this. And I realized that it, there was a couple hundred people there. I'm willing to say with a lot of confidence that two to three lives were saved that day by that hike. And I realize that these hikes really save some lives Absolutely. by, by giving guys an opportunity to be back around their tribe, for lack of a better term, the people that understand and the people that have those shared experiences to be able to crack the jokes they want to crack, that they know they can't do at work because they'll be talking to HR within five minutes and yada, yada, yada. Make fun of the people they want to make fun of. Just do the shit that you used to do downrange. Yeah. It, you know, I I, I got to be honest, not much different on the officer side than on the enlisted side. It really isn't. And in aviation, you're you're with your enlisted guys anyway. And so you just, so it's just a, a it's just a kind of different kind of support system that'll make you realize and, and give you that good feeling again that most guys miss when they leave the military. And, and I, I just, I said, Vegas has a huge veterans community. It, it would be an awesome place for a hike. And I wanted to try to make one happen. Obviously my grandiose plans got shot to shit, yeah, by COVID, yeah. but we're going to make it happen. It'll be a no frills hike. We're going to, you know, got some good news today that even though we're not getting a permit from the city, the cops are still going to give us an escort. Nice. You know? planned about you know had worked on and hired a bunch of off-duty cops to do um it's going to be fun that we're not going to be able to have the meet and greet at the leatherneck club there those guys are awesome they wanted to host us for it they're not i'm gonna put out when we're done on social media if guys want to go there unofficially just understand that they're 25 percent capacity and they may not be able to have everybody in okay um, um, can't have a post party, but that's okay. The it's the hike is what it's about. It's one hundred percent what it's about. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I want to get the people at the hike, and 
and get the people that need to go to these hikes all the time there and get the new folks out there. And hopefully there's one or two guys that are in the dark hole that I get out of it. And that, that makes it a hundred percent worth the, to me. That's really yeah. all I give a shit about. That's the mission. That's the mission. Hey man, uh, we got to cut it short cause we were just running short on time. I, I want to have you back on though. Maybe we'll do that, um, deployment show or non-deployment, you know what That's I mean? That's a good idea. Uh, and I'm also going to be doing an, an aviation show. I have another Marine Corps aviator who's a friend of mine. Um, he flew HMX. What the hell do they call that for the president? HMX-1, yeah. yeah. Presidential yeah. Helicopter Squadron. Yeah. He flew that. Hey, let's bring up Dan Mallard's name for like a fifth time. Oh, Dan Mallard man, was with bro. HMX-1. Uh, kind of interesting. This is the Dan Mallard show. Um, but yeah. awesome. Uh, Yano. I, 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 will, I will be glad to come back on. I appreciate you having me on. A chance to shout out about the hike. Anybody yeah. in the Vegas area that doesn't know about it, now you know. 0800 Battlefield Vegas behind Circus Circus. Be there. Guys, thank you so much. Great meeting you in person finally, Kevin. Yeah, and, uh, yeah we've been chatting for about a year, maybe longer. We'll, yeah, we'll swap some Air Force stories. That's um, right. That's right. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a text a little later because um, uh, a PJ friend of mine uh, went down in a helicopter. He survived, barely. Uh, I think it was 04. 04 What's 05. his name? Uh, well, I don't want to say it over over the air in case. There's a decent know. chance I know. Yeah, he was dead, and they kept him alive. Uh, brought him down a mountain. Uh, incredible story. Um, but yeah, when you said Pedro, it reminded me of that. Yeah, we. I, I mean, I we. I lost a couple of friends that we had an aircraft shot down in ten, and uh, lost some friends in that. But yeah, I, I I know most of the guys from that era. You know, we're not a huge community. Yeah, no, not at all. Awesome but, um, community. God, I love the yeah. PJs. They're freaking awesome. They're good dudes, man. They're good guys to know when you're hung over, man. That's uh, IV, no problem. <laughs> Many days coming into work on a Monday, I come in a half hour early and get an IV just to nice. so so to come so I didn't look horrible for the commander. Nice. So, nice. They're great guys to have, and they're some of the best guys to have if you hurt. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, Yano. All right, All right man. Thanks, I take, I man, man. I appreciate it. See That's you guys. Cool. Have a great day. All right, Thanks, cool. Man, I, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's going to be a good hike. I would love to go out oh, yeah. to uh, Vegas. That was on my radar to make it out there, uh, hang out with Zach finally. Zach and I have known each other for like three or four years. We've never met in person. Never. Never. He went active duty. He just switched to, well, he's reserved, but he did that whole like six months right. or whatever. Um, but he was going to go to that. We were going to go hang out, but COVID. I was going to go, but COVID and I bought a house. So COVID stash. Kinda- yeah, even my brother said, "Yo, what's up with the bro stash?" So it is. What do you mean, what's up with it? Look at <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> yeah, he's got the uh, he's got the jeans and then the, the bro shoes on too. So <laughs> that's right. Not really. Um. So yeah, I guess uh, the, the tonight's show. What what is going on? What is going on with the delay? It's the, it's the end the, of the year. A lot is going on. That's what it is. It's not holidays scattered. are are like in full swing. So it's it's about that time that things start to fall apart mm-hmm. because everyone's trying to juggle as as recently as Thanksgiving, Black, yeah. Black Friday, Christmas coming up, New Year's. For every shitty show we give you, you get one good show. So look at that. You never know what it's going to be. You could get 10 shitty shows in a row. And then, do you want, I think our next guest is actually going to make this shitty show Again, a good we show. always bring on better people. I know. Well, that's the whole thing. I bring on people that are studs, that are operators, and they make us look like shit but that's the whole point of the show uh let's bring on do you know i just realized i was gonna give a speech about earlier we we, we got we had to bring donald on but it was all about just Yano. sucking up Yano. It, it's all about Dude. just i was thinking donald i don't know it's it's i was gonna basically say it's all about just sucking up the shit and that sounds gross and <laughs> And pressing forward and not not making up this idea that life is is or whatever your dream is or your dream job is unicorns and puppy dogs that maybe life sucks for a little bit and then it's going to get better after you put the work in. Um, and then the other thing I was going to get at is with social media. Uh, and I know you younger people are all about social media and you see what other people put on and you're like, well, why does this guy have his shit together? Why does this girl have her shit together? And that's not always the case. Um, in fact, I'd be willing to bet it's about 99% chance, not the case. It's just what they're choosing to show you on social media. So finding happiness and finding um, meaning it's more complicated than getting that dream job, way more complicated than getting that dream job. You can find happiness 
outside of your dream job or, or I'm sorry, your, your job, right? So, okay, this is a job that pays the bills. Uh, and, but it affords me time to hang out with my kids or it affords me time to go skiing or whatever. So you got to look at the, you got to take the good with the bad. Um, I don't know. I had this whole speech planned, but tonight's been a clusterfuck. So <laughs> why not? But what's funny is the guy that I have on coming right now, uh, he's 100% contradictory to that. Uh, not that he didn't work hard for what he got, but he, he did what a lot of people are like, oh, someday I want to do that. And you have to be like, yeah, reality says you're probably not going to do that. Yeah, this guy did it. Uh, he basically uh, reached the pinnacle of, I believe, of uh, skydiving. Matt Davison, former Golden Knight U.S. skydiving team, five times, five times skydiving world champion. I got to ask him what that means, world champion in skydiving. Cartoonist, DJ, writer, and podcast host. So without further ado, Hit it. There you go. Matt, your your bio reads like a true veteran's bio. There's been this like joke. My my therapist, <laughs> you know, it's going to be a good story when someone's like, my therapist says, uh, she said that if you can go out on a Saturday and lay down on a hammock for two hours, three hours, hell, one hour, you're not a veteran. And the idea there is as veterans, we're constantly go, 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 go. There's only 24 hours in the day. I'll sleep two and then try to get 22 hours. I mean, we're constantly on the go. And it sounds to me, looking at your resume, that you might fall into that category. Oh, well, maybe a, a little bit. I think I, uh, I go in phases. You know, there's definitely times where I'm not as motivated as I, uh, I feel I should be. But, uh, you know, I, I, I have uh, phases and epiphanies every so often, and it uh, seems to work out all right. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's, that's true with anyone. I mean, I'll sit there and look at my day and wonder how I get anything accomplished, but I also sit on the couch and watch TV with my wife, <laughs> you know, or I, I, I have a one wheel. I'll go out skateboarding with my, my son. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess it, it comes down to, are you productive with your time? Are you spending 10 hours a day smoking pot and watching or playing video games versus, <laughs> versus, <laughs> you know, maybe taking a little time here and there and getting some work done. Um, but yeah, so good on you, man. What, so let's go back to, I guess I, I like to find out the backstory, what led you to the military. So where, where did that begin? So, uh, my father was, uh, with special forces, uh, station of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Um, when I was, uh, I believe we came here in 1986. So I've been here, uh, for quite a while. I was in sixth grade then. And, uh, he started, uh, he went to Halo school and started skydiving uh, when I was about 14 years old. And I asked him uh, if I could do it at the time. Uh, my mother was at the Boston Ballet Company and she had, <sighs> sorry about that. Um, sorry. Uh, she, um, you know, was involved with the Boston Ballet Company, had me involved in theater. So, uh, you know, when I said that to my dad at the time, I think he kind of looked and he was like, oh, well, yeah, you know, if you, if you want to, and you're uh, 16 was the age at the time, it's now 18 uh, with parental consent. Uh, to be able to jump, but uh, he was like, you know, we'll get you going. So 16th birthday present, um, you know, came around. I met him down at uh, Fort Rucker, Alabama, where they teach the uh, the Army's uh, helicopter aviators and uh, made a jump down there with the Fort Rucker Sport Parachute Club uh, out of a uh, UH-1, a Huey. I was sitting there with a death grip on the side of the seat. and was pretty scared, but uh, um, so uh, that was uh, during my spring break that year. Um, parents bust me back up to, uh, uh, Fort Bragg while my dad was still continuing his education. He was a, uh, PA and uh, nice. his master's degree down there. So, uh, that's what I do. I'm uh, a PA. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. He, um, uh, they sent me back up here. And at the time I was able to make a bunch of jumps. The, uh, at Fort Bragg, they had two parachute clubs at the time. They had the, uh, 82nd, uh, airborne division sport parachute club. And they also had the green brace Sport parachute club. So, Pretty much on every weekend, they had helicopter support that would come out and for, at the time, it was $10 a month. You pay 10 bucks a month and, uh, you know, for a membership fee and as fast as you're able to pack, uh, you know, you can make jumps. So it was a pretty sweet deal. And they had, uh, they had guys from the Golden Knights, uh, the U.S. Army Parachute Team that would come out and, uh, you know, do some coaching. So I was exposed to all that stuff at a, at a pretty young age, you know, so I was definitely fortunate uh, in that respect. And my dad was a... Uh, an accomplished jumper and was able to guide me along the way. Um, you know, especially in those early years when, you know, safety is definitely a, uh, a big sure. concern for a 16 year old, you know, I always like to say, and I bring it up, man, I hit the wrong button. There we go. I always like to say, uh, 
and I guess I tweet about this a lot or, or Instagram, it, it's so important to be excellent for your kids, right? To have them see you do something other than drinking a beer on the back porch. Um, it, I don't know. I think it just, it, it, it leads them into a good path. They see that, Oh, dad or mom, uh, rides mountain bikes down the side of a mountain. You know, that's, that's more important than sitting around playing video games, man. I'm harping on this, this whole thing today. I feel but, attacked. I totally I know. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's really important. It sounds like that. That's what, what shaped you, uh, eventually becoming a, a world-class skydiver. I, th I, I think so. My dad uh, definitely had uh, a lot to do with that and the environment that, um, you know, that, that I was in at the time, you know, I was uh, surrounded by people that were top achievers, um, uh, world champions and, uh, you know, uh, special operators, you know, special forces guys. So I was exposed to uh, some some great influences at that early age. Sure. Um, so you get you, you I, eventually, I assume you just in, enlisted in the army. Um, is that, I is that did. just what happened? You're like, okay, this is my, I'm going to do this. I'm 18. Let's, let's do what dad did. Yeah. I made a uh, 250 jumps before I was, uh, before I came in the army. Um, so I enlisted with the intent of, uh, going through the golden Knights assessment and selection process and, uh, you know, trying to make it to the team, which, uh, I, I came in enlisted as a uh, parachute rigger. And, uh, you know, kind of to get me closer to Fort Bragg, um, yeah. uh, which is definitely the center of the universe for uh, for the airborne. And, uh, uh, yeah, so I was able to uh, get back to to Fort Bragg. And after about uh, 10 months at the 600 Quartermaster Company, uh, sewing, you know, huge uh, cargo, you know, G11s, G12s, uh, cargo parachutes, I was able to go to the assessment and selection process and uh, fortunately uh, made it through at the time we had uh, 28 candidates and we finished with seven. Wow. Wow. And I assume this is like a, are you under the PR or who, what, what are division are you under or, and I don't, so, uh, I speak right Air now, Force, I don't speak Army. So I don't know. yeah, no worries. Uh, right now we're under the uh, U S Army recruiting command. Okay. The, uh, okay. I, I still say weird, but I, I retired last year, but uh, yeah, I was with the team for a total of uh, 25 out of my 27 years. So no shit. A, I was going to ask. I habit to get, get rid of. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask how long is a uh, golden Knight assignment? Cause I mean, do you do any combat rotations? Do you go to infantry school or what, what do they, or are you specifically, this is what I do this is my job almost like a pilot flies. Right. So it's a, uh, it's a bit different for everybody. I was, uh, you know, for fortunate to be able to come in, uh, at an early phase of my career. So I was able to, uh, and then I got fortunate again, about halfway through my career, they made uh, permanent slots, um, uh, a thing on, on the team. So as a, uh, 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 part of the army competition program as a competitor on the team, as long as you're productive, you could stay up, you know, your entire career. Um, there was That's a, awesome. uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So that was a, that was really cool because it does take a lot of time to, to train up competitors, to be able to get to the world-class level. Uh, sure, so it was yeah. great for us to be able to, to keep people, you know, for a longer tenure. Um, uh, yeah, before that we were, uh, the attrition was about every two years or so we were losing some folks. Okay. Yeah. That's gotta be of all the, the career fields. I mean, I, I don't know many that allow you to stay in one area like that. That's that, I guess that could be good or could be bad. I don't know. I, I think it sounds like, especially if you're jumping out of airplanes, I mean, it, it's a lot better than I, I was a XO uh, during my last year and did they, did they have those in the Marines? They sure do. Yeah. And it sure was do, Bob. the worst I sat at a desk and I pushed papers and they're like, they're like, Hey, uh, Captain Sullivan, um, you know, uh, you can't fly anymore, but there's plenty of desk jobs. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> no, our XOs were the guys that were basically, uh, you know, I'm, I'm about to, I'm about to ream your ass and then bust you down and then send you on your way. That's where our XOs no, we were bitch boys. We just did all the work for the commander. <laughs> we did everything, everything that he wanted done, like writing performance. Oh, it was horrible. All right. So 25, you said 27 years you did in the military? 27 years total. Yeah. Shit. What was your transition back? So we, we talk about this a lot in the irreverent warriors, right? Is, you know, going from active duty, we we're just talking about it. I don't remember if we talked about this on air, if we talked about it prior to the show starting, but you know, you, you walk around, you say, I'm a, I, uh, I used to be a sergeant of Marines and now I'm washing windows at whatever, you know, and people tend to, that, that's a rough transition for them. That's where a lot of mental health uh, uh, issues come out. How was it? So 27 years, how was your transition back into the, the world of the civilian? 
So it was, uh, you know, I think my situation's a little different than most, and I was uh, actually starting to dread it. So I was, uh, uh, I, I filed for an extension. I was able to get a one-year extension. I filed for another one after that, and uh, it, it was, it was turned down <laughs> at the higher level. So uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to extend. I was past my RCP at the time. So that was one of the the catches of the permanent slots was that uh, you were capped off at uh, E7 or Sergeant First Class for the Army. Um, and which was fine with me, you know, uh, I was, I was happy doing what I was doing, competing with the team, but, uh, the flip side to that was that, uh, you know, once you got beyond RCP, you had to file for extensions and that yeah. obviously became harder and harder to do. But, um, so my situation was I got a call from a, another competitive skydiving team called, uh, Arizona Airspeed out of, uh, skydive Arizona and, uh, Eloy, Arizona. And uh, they've been, for the last 25 years, they've been one of the top uh, four-way formation skydiving teams in the world. And uh, so getting a call like that from those guys was definitely unexpected and uh, a huge honor. So fortunately, I was able to, the, the very uh, uh, next day after my retirement, uh, had a huge retirement celebration. And, I, you know, just anybody who might be out there listening, I want to thank everybody for coming again. It was in that Golden Knights hangar that we were talking about, and they had all the aircraft lined up uh, outside and uh, lots of people that came from all over the country. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a huge honor for me. But so we had this huge celebration. I felt bad because I still had family here. And the very next morning, I'm flying out to uh, Arizona to begin training that, that very next day. Um, so for the next three months, I was training for the U.S. National Skydiving Championships uh, for 2019. And then the 2019 uh, World Cup of Formation Skydiving. And okay. uh, so made uh, about uh, in three months, I believe we made 350 jumps or so. So it was, uh, you know, it was pretty hot and heavy there. So uh, that kind of took my focus to get back to, to your question. That took my focus, uh, you know, and I was able to, to put it uh, into something else to where I wasn't thinking too much. There was one time when I went to, uh, I had... Um, we had a couple of training days and we had a day off. So on that day off, I went out to uh, Pima Air and Space Museum there in Arizona. And one of our Golden Knights aircraft had just been, you know, put in there recently. So I went out there and it was kind of a, uh, an overcast day, which is somewhat rare for that part of Arizona. And uh, there weren't too many people out there. It was raining on and off and I was able to go outside and, uh, you know, so I was the only person around. And um that's when all the feels hit me at once when i saw that retired aircraft there and you know i just recently retired and uh i jumped out of that you know that aircraft many times had lots of great memories out of it and uh so yeah it, it hit me pretty hard then but uh yeah it's it's normal um i think we all kind of mourn our past i mean there's so much that 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 being in the military represents represents you being younger represents you being around your friends represents traveling the world and not being so uh i don't want to say it because it sounds bad but being you know strapped down with family and issues you know you can go to a deployment and everything's gone all your your whole job is the mission and not dying and that is simple it's it can be tough, but it's really, really simple. And then you get into the real world and you're like, Oh shit, yeah. <laughs> this is civilian life. I got to get used to. Um, what is something that you would recommend, uh, someone listening right now who might be struggling with the transition to, to help guide them into becoming a civilian more easily? Um, find a mentor in whatever field it is that you want to do would be uh, my first suggestion. And then the other is to stay in contact with, uh, with any of your friends from the military. And I think uh, irreverent warriors is a great thing to do uh, as well. You know, I didn't know about it until recently and I saw about it on uh, Instagram and went to the, the Fayetteville, uh, North Carolina hike. And oh, wow. uh, I was there I, surprised we didn't yeah, bump into each yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so I, I walked up there and I really didn't know uh, anyone, you know, I found out about it through, through Instagram and uh there are a couple of guys, a couple of uh, Marines, Joe and uh, Michael, and kind of, you know, introduced themselves and took me under their wing. And uh, I kind of adopted them as my uh, my my running buddies there for the rest of the day. And we uh, we, you know, during during the whole hike, it was uh, it was really cool because you don't realize that you miss certain things like, you know, a ruck march and, you know, just the, the conversations that would go on whenever, you know, you didn't you, you weren't didn't have noise discipline or anything, but, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of stuff, you know, it's, uh, I, you know, really miss those conversations. Just like you said earlier, um, you know, you're able to, to say things and crack those jokes that you might not otherwise be able to. 
Sure. Um, this, this might be a question you've heard a million times, but I just, I'm interested in knowing how, how you deal with this. Do you, how do you, um, uh, compartmentalize, internalize fear, right? So I like to look at it, um, flying over Afghanistan and you look out the window of the aircraft and a corkscrew missiles coming up at you, right? When that happens, it's the weirdest thing, right? You can hear your blood pressure in your ears. Everything goes quiet. You get really focused. You do what you have to do. And, you know, four seconds goes by and it's like 20 minutes. It feels so long and you're so aware of what's going on. And then when it, when that's over, you just get this adrenaline dump and you feel like shit. I assume jumping out of the air, an aircraft isn't along the lines of combat. How do you control that fear? Is it the same? Explain that whole process of jumping out of a freaking airplane at thousands of feet. Yeah, so we make, uh, when I was on the, the Golden Knights, uh, we made um, on average of 750 jumps to 1,200 jumps a year. So uh, the actual jump itself at a certain point during the year, you, you have a healthy respect for it, but it's not, uh, I don't think you're getting the same, you know, that same immediate uh, huge adrenaline um, rush that you that you would in, say, a combat situation. Um, you know, do you, ever, you, kind of, you kind of become accustomed to, uh, to, to the jumps. I'm sorry, go ahead. You no, know, I was going to say, do you, do you ever look out the window and you're like, holy shit, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> okay. I go in phases. So, so sometimes I'll, uh, you know, it'll be, you know, business as usual, just another day at the office. And then every now and then, you know, I'll just look out and I'm like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you kind of feel bad for your friends that, um, took office jobs and you're like, there's a great story. Uh, it, it's with, I'm trying to remember where I even heard it, but these guys are with, you remember, well, you probably wouldn't remember, but there was this uh, big band guy by the name of, I think it was Benny Goodman. Might've been him or it was some other guy that was part of the military. It doesn't matter. Uh, so it's like picture it, 1930s and this band on Christmas Eve is driving through a snowstorm and the snow is pouring down. It's cold and it's, and the, the bus gets a flat tire, pulls over on the side of the road. All the band members get out. They're all dressed in their tuxes with their shoes and they're wrapping their feet up in newspapers so they don't ruin their clothes. And they pick up their instruments and they decide that they're going to walk into town. So they walk into town and a, a three of the guys walk past a little house on the corner and they look inside and they see this guy in a sweater smoking a pipe with his daughter sitting on his knee and there's a fire in the fireplace and a golden retriever under the Christmas tree. And the wife is, um, I was going to get old school, bringing him another drink. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. Married. I don't think of stuff Maybe. like that, but they look in the window and one guy goes, Holy crap. Can you believe this? And the other guy looks at him and goes, I know how do people live like this? And then they keep walking on to their, to their, I, I heard that story and I'm like, that is so true. It, it speaks volumes for the military, speaks volumes for Silky's hikes. We're just designed veterans and it's people have we done are. military. We're, we just sitting around with the golden retriever, although it's nice. It's just not who we are. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Your let's talk about one thing real quick. Uh, so your podcast, uh, first of all, what's the name of your podcast? It's called A Champion's Journey. Okay. Uh, it talks about rituals and habits which have helped people propel themselves into greatness, I guess. What are some of your rituals and habits, and what are the some what are some of the ones that you've read or, or you've been told about uh, during your interviews? Uh, some of the common threads are just, uh, just like you said, you know, just uh, uh, working hard and not really being able to uh, sit down. Some of the, uh, uh, you know, one of my uh, teammates and close friends, um, he is one of the, you know, most motivated guys that I've ever, if he, it's very rare that you'll see him, uh, sit down and take a break. And, uh, so that's, that's a common thread that, you know, that I see with these guys are super motivated. They put in everything, uh, whatever area of focus, you know, they choose to focus on They're they're putting everything into it. Um, and, uh, uh yeah, they're just, man, uh, you know, I've had so many great people on the uh, the podcast. We've got 15 episodes so far, and, nice. and all of them nice. are uh, are just overachievers. What's What's wonderful about podcasting? I used to do another podcast uh, years ago, and I, I must be 300 interviews in. And every single every single person I interview, I take a little bit of something with me, which I hope the listeners take a little bit of something with them too. But uh, you'll get a lot out of it, and um, you also hit a big benchmark. If you get more than seven episodes, like 90 percent of podcasts fail before their first seven episodes. So good on you. I guess you're here to stay. <laughs> no, thanks. I hope so. I took a break uh, intentionally. I just got a, a hip replacement. 
basement last uh, July, and uh, you know I didn't. I wanted to focus on on recovery, and that was taking up a lot of my bandwidth. So uh, um, yeah, I uh, uh, ended up uh, you know just taking a break, but uh, looking forward to get getting back to it. And uh, this weekend, um, Saturday night, we've got the uh, the Golden Knight. Christmas party this year out at uh, Skydive Paraclete XP in Rayford, North Carolina. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping to get uh, one or two of the alumni from the team there that I don't normally get to see throughout the year anymore and uh, have them on the show. And when you guys go in that giant tube? Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the wind tunnel uh, uh, Paraclete XP Sky Venture. Yep, I was just flying in that today with, uh, with the Knights and helping them uh, coach a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That looks awesome. I saw that a few times. Um, I would love to do that, that I could see myself doing, uh, jumping out of the aircraft. Well, cause you got to remember if I was jumping out of an airplane, it was the worst day of anyone's <laughs> life at that point. Right. We didn't want to jump out. Uh, people in the back obviously did, but awesome. Where can folks find, I mean, there's so much, uh, I guess, I guess I would say the easiest way to find out everything about you is just go to your Instagram page and you have your link tree link there. But, um, I don't know, where do you like to send people? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, the link tree's got uh, everything from the podcast to the DJ stuff to, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much everything. I think that'd be the best place there, Facebook. Uh, yeah. Awesome. What's your, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Give us a plug. What do you call it? The, the, your handle? Your, what's the, why oh, can't I do that? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. MD Knighted, K-N-I-G-H-T-E-D. Awesome, man. Um, I've, I'm sorry if it was rushed. Today's episode has just been a little wonky like that, but um, yeah, no I'm glad you went to, I usually tell people now that we've spoken, you have to go to a silky psych, but you've been to one and hopefully I'll see it another one. I mean, next year's, next year's um, faithful hike. I'm going to be there. So maybe we'll meet up. Yeah, nice. Definitely. I hope so. Um, I'll try to make as many as I can, you know, it was a great experience and uh, you know, I appreciate everybody. Everybody was just so welcoming out there and it was, uh, I wanted to mention that it was kind of like a skydiving subculture uh, where, you know, people are just kind of, uh, you get people from all walks of life and everybody's accepting of one another. And, uh, man, I just really had a great time. So I'm planning on making more, uh, if I can fit it in my schedule over the next year, but, uh, yeah, definitely hope to see you there and meet you in person. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for coming on Thank and, you. uh, all the best. All the best to you. Yeah. Take care. Take right, care. Right. Again, we didn't follow our rule about bringing on people that are so much cooler than us. <sighs> I mean, but that's how you do it. I think it's a low benchmark. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've hit a low when you have to get everybody who's better than you. But even if we were at a high, they're still better. Yeah. And if I say it's a, it's a low benchmark, then I guess um, it's insulting to them, right? Because no, we are no, we're the low benchmark. No, we are awesome. And all these people are just so much more awesomer than us. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. These high performers, I love uh, hearing about... Uh, first of all, their journey into that. And that's that's a weird uh, career field at 27 years. And one that's we used to have guys like that in the Air Force. Uh, they they phased them out, but they were like lifelong captains. So they'd be lifelong O3s. And it was kind of like a gentleman's agreement that, OK, I don't want to be a staff officer. I don't want to go to staff officer school. I don't want to do any of that. I just want to fly. I want to have 30,000 hours of flying and be the best flyer that there is. And then they'll be like, OK, don't worry about OPRs. Don't That's worry the that. guy that knows his shit. Absolutely. You, like, oh, I got this colonel who's done it, a, you know, 10, 12 years. But I got this captain who's done it 20, yeah. 22 years. That's the guy you go to. Yeah. That's the guy where you're like, man, I know this guy's been to journeyman school, but this fucking captain. Well, it's like, it's like the, well, there's two things again, either he got busted down, but he don't, usually you don't get busted down as officer, you, you get booted. Um, so if you see an old captain, yeah, he's there, something's going on. Right. And it's probably not bad. The other way was, um, warrant officers, uh, those freaking Sherpa flyers. I can't remember what the <laughs> name of the aircraft is, but it's, they're called the Sherpa, these, um, uh, army guard or reserve guys. I mean, we used to fly with them in Iraq they were animals. And these guys, these guys were so old school. I was looking at one dude and he had, how did he get away with this? I have no idea. I think because he was a CW5. He had a 40, That's why. he had a Smith and Wesson 45 revolver <laughs> with, with a, like, just like uh what's his name on um Fury. Remember that, that 45 oh, yeah, he had man. with the, he had something like that. We're in a leather holster. I'm like, this guy rules. With all dirty hairy on you. Absolutely. Um, Make my day. So we got a few more minutes. We got some things to go over. I don't, so I, I'm torn whether or not to bring up, uh, you know what? No, no, no. We're not going to bring up that. What we're going to bring up is this. So, you know, if you've watched this show, I have this, this theory that we live in a, in a, 
uh, simulation. Like this is the matrix type of thing. And everyone's like, that's crazy. But there's a lot of smart people that think that's true. Took the blue pill. And just look around. Shit is crazy out there. And I always find like the UFOs they found this year. I mean, what? Uh, it's because we live in a freaking simulation. Check this out. Uh, bring up the COVID mass prediction. So this now, before you watch this or as you watch this, I have to rewind a little bit. Keep in mind that this happened in April of 2019. His name is COVID and he's wearing a mask. His name is COVID and he's on, I don't know what show that was. And a year ago, more than that, two years ago, he's wearing a mask. Uh, keep working. What right, the thanks. hell? Cut that off there. <laughs> oh my God. Just, just this whole thing is just, this whole episode is falling apart. What? What? My brain doesn't know what to make of that. I mean, it's obviously coincidence, but if he was wearing a mask in 2019, I'd be like, yeah, it's a little weird. But the dude's name is COVID at the same time. Perfect. Timing, maybe it didn't come from a bad, it came from him. Perfect, Knew it. Perfect example that we live. And so I thought, there's this isn't the first time. Make sure you mute this when you bring it up. This isn't the first time this has happened. Uh, check out the Simpsons from 2001. Uh, it was the one that just popped up for you there and was screaming at us, but make sure you mute it because it's horrible. Um, but this happened, I mean, like, totally take the sound off because it's just useless. Um, look at this. Rewind a little bit. Rewind, like, five seconds. Okay, now look at the girl. Look at her sign, and it falls. And then here comes Trump down the escalator. And now watch the cartoon version. So that other one was from 2015, where it was actually showing Trump go down. Now look at, look on the left. And then sign falls. What the hell? Dude, those are 15 or 14 or 15 years apart. Right? I mean, is it a coincidence? I'm going to say no. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say absolutely not. I am standing by that we live in a simulation. I blame Nostradamus. He predicted it. He did he really? In The Simpsons. It will happen. Oh, yeah. I thought he really <laughs> did something like that. When I was a kid, I used to get so freaked out. Um, uh, from Nostradamus, I watched like a Nostradamus special and I was convinced that we were all going to die. And like, cause remember all those, like half his things are like just fiery death. Oh yeah. Scared the shit out of me. Um, family guy, family guy. Should I show this one? Fuck it. Brody Jenner. God, what a douchebag. I can't believe that came out of Bruce Jenner's vagina. Bruce Jenner is a man. No, Brian. That's what the press would have you believe, but he's not. Bruce Jenner is a woman. <laughs> An elegant, beautiful Dutch beautiful. woman. All right, boys, go get him over there. And now, please welcome Mr. Bruce Jenner. Navy shout out. <laughs> We're so getting flagged. Watch this guy hits himself in the head. <laughs> Just wanted to remind you fellas what you're all fighting for. So that happened uh, way before he transitioned into Caitlyn Jenner. Well, what the fuck? <sighs> what, you even what the fuck? What is going on? And I, I found like 20 more of these examples, but I would bore you if I kept going on and on and on and on. But um, I don't know. I just wanted to bring that up. I wanted to show you that uh, something is weird and I don't think we live in a normal reality. It's official. We're in the Matrix and yeah. you are the one. And <laughs> cartoons or maybe are predicting you're not. the future. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Did you ever see the joke? It just made me realize we'll, we'll end with this guys. Cause I know we're going a little bit late like we do every week, but, right. um, uh, have you ever heard Joe Rogan's Bruce Jenner? I have. Yes. I'm sorry. Caitlyn reason. Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner is, uh, uh, yes. Pull that up. Uh, it's, it's phenomenal. I love Joe. I can't. 
can't be one of these lows. I was born a man. Joe Rogan's great. Man, I saw him in, in uh, what do you don't say concert? I saw him do stand up over at the DFAC about two or three years ago. Well worth it. He is the. <laughs> you can show that. You want to show that one? Oh, just, just close that. All right. Don't worry about it. We'll do that next week. Next week, we are going to go over thalassemia. What? That sounds like a weird disease. No. What we've been bringing up, you've noticed on these last, I don't know, 100 episodes, is I am scared shitless of the ocean. I like swimming in the ocean. Uh, it's just the whole boat thing, going out there and looking down and seeing black scares shit. I mean, it's like a, a phobia. I can't stand it. Well, I found out it's called thalassemia. And while I'm looking it up, I found a whole shitload of videos that prove that the ocean is a terrifying place. And you shouldn't fuck with it. You should stay on the beach. Nope. You should just sit there because you're not going to get eaten by a shark if you're sunning your buns. I think that's it. I think that's all we have. Uh, just a reminder, December 5th. Well, let's go through. How much reminders do we have to give? Uh, Las Vegas, this Saturday. Go to it if you're local. Um, Key West on December 12th. Go to that if you're local. Even if you're not local. Why am I saying if you're local? Drive out there, bitches. Why not? Um, what else we got? December 15th, we are doing the or Revival 1869. I know a lot of you live around here. I want to see you there because we want to help out uh, that Marine because he's had a rough go at it with uh, COVID-19. Uh, and, you know, I just, we've been talking about going there and just dropping, you know, some money at his bar. And I think it's a good time to do, especially if we get a lot of people and you get a free meal. So you can't beat that. That's going to be pretty fucking awesome. Um, December 17th, we're finally going to find out who is the smartest branch Air Force. Marines. We have a Space Force guy coming on. Did I tell you that? surprise yeah we have a space force guy coming on to compete maybe he will blow us all out of the water i'm not sure air force um i don't know jamie or jamie <laughs> jeremy do you have any uh announcements before we end this beautiful episode other than that if you're looking forward to your you know future hikes just keep in mind that go to irreverentwarriors.com it's the only place you can find out where future hikes will be as the year progresses and the beginning of the year starts we will start putting hikes yeah, on think, the website. I think January they're going to start putting up the, yep. Uh, so just keep an eye out for that. And if you want your gear, silkies, clothing, etc., irreverentwarriors.com or 21 gun help out the show. That's right. Head over to 21 gun.net for everything. 21 gun, call a friend, call someone you served with, text them. I do it all the time. And they're like, well, why the fuck are you texting me? No, just, you know, whatever. Be like, Hey man, what's going on? Um, it helps saves lives. Get them to go to silky's hikes. Uh, get them to go to their events, you know, get them to watch the podcast and we can all reminisce about our glory days when we were kicking the shit out of the Taliban and Al Qaeda. Until then, Kevin. Good night.